Hi guys, so right here I have yet another magnetic keyboard and this time it is from the brand Monsgeek. Some of you might already know this but Monsgeek is the daughter company of Echo so it's pretty clear that this and Echo keyboard I reviewed a while back have a lot in common. They are both in the 75% layout, have a metallic knob on the top right corner and are really really sturdy keyboards. They are also both usable in wireless mode with the included USB dongle. However, they are are not exactly the same and some of the differences are not only cosmetic. The main difference being that the Monskig board is actually polling at 8000 Hz and unlike the Red Dragon board it is also scanning at 8000 Hz rate so it is a real 8000 Hz polling keyboard. What does this mean in practice? Well it's gonna give you a lower latency than the Echo board overall but by how much I don't know and sadly I can't test it but in theory it should be faster. The other major difference is cosmetic and it is the case. The case on the Mons Geek has the side rails instead of the rim going all around the board and it doesn't have the different color accent piece on the back. Honestly, I dig both of these cases but maybe this Mons Geek one a little bit more. But then let's have a look what's included with this board and what does this chunk of aluminium have inside. So the first thing you notice is the sheet of paper. This is actually something that you should hold on to since it's for tape modding the keyboard we will come back to it the board is very sturdy and i gotta say it sounds very good straight out of the box the case is very sleek looking and the only thing i don't like about this colorway are these pink keycaps and they just gotta go. Included with the keyboard is of course a switch puller, some smaller tape pieces for doing a force break mode, which we will also get back to, the USB dongle if you wanna use it wirelessly, and lastly, the USB cable. Now let's open this thing up. First things that gotta go are these keycaps, of course. Then we'll just unscrew the screws on the back and the front piece will lift up nicely. The PCB is held to the bottom with some connectors so be mildly careful with that. We'll just flip it and disconnect the battery and the USB daughter board from the main PCB. There are actually lots of sound dampening foam on this board which is always nice to see on a pre-built keyboard like this. The side accent pieces are actually detachable so those with the 3D printer could do some nice customization with them as well. Overall. I think the case build quality is just fantastic. These small silicone pieces on the plate are for the gasket mounting method of this board which is something that makes the typing feel more enjoyable and it also reduces any extra pinginess on a metal case like this. To go deeper to the build of this board we need to unscrew some screws on the back and the plate with the switches can be then lifted. Here we see some foam and a layer of switch pad foam so yeah it's kind of safe to say that they have really taken the sound dampening thing seriously with this board. The switches this board uses are the same as on the Echo board so the Echo Cream yellow magnetic switches. These are pre-looped switches and overall the loop work is good enough. Hand lubing would make some difference but these did not fit my switch opener so I quickly ditched that project quite happily. I however tuned the stabilizers a little bit more because I found them to be a little bit rattly straight out of the box but uh, yeah with some Crytox 205 grade 0 applied to the space bar made it sound a little bit better. Applying the tape mod is very straightforward since all you basically do is cut some openings for the wires, unpeel the tape sheet and apply it behind the PCB. This will basically act as a low pass filter to the typing sound taming the higher frequency range a bit. The force break mod is then just making a gap between the top and bottom pieces of the case with a smaller tape piece. You should apply them as evenly as possible across the case, but yeah, I didn't notice any annoying pinginess with this board before this mod, so this mod is not very much needed in my opinion, but some users have had bad pinginess with their echo boards with the similar case structure, so do that if you want. It's easy to do and it's also easy to reverse if you for some reason don't like it. With the mods, the board sounds very very good for a magnetic keyboard. Let's have a quick typing test. Oh. 
overall, I find the typing aspect of this board to be very satisfying and I very much enjoy using this at work and scripting videos in my free time. So for everyday use, this board is very nice. But more importantly, how good is gaming with this and what can it do? Well, just like the Echo board, this has a rapid trigger feature, customizable actuation point and now they also have their own tachyon mode in a sense called uh, light mode. This setting is supposed to increase the scanning rate of some predefined keys up to four keys at a time so it's still quite far behind the voting tachyon mode but it's still quite admirable that they want to improve the performance further. I find it to improve my super glide consistency a little bit but even without it I can do those with this board pretty well. However first I made the mistake of copying my voting settings on this board and was kind of bummed that my performance felt different but after honing in some settings specifically for this keyboard I feel very good with it. The main difference I still have with the booting compared to this is that these switches are stiffer so I don't feel as in control of my movements with this but I'm pretty sure I could adjust pretty well if I would use this for a month straight. But my advice is if you go with this or the Echo Board really take your time honing in the settings to suit your needs the best. Don't just copy some other dude's settings or your other keyboard settings or something else. But yeah, after you have used this keyboard for like a longer period of time and adjusted your settings, I'm sure you will find great success with this board. In conclusion, I think this board is yet again a really good pre-built magnetic keyboard and a good choice for those who don't want to wait for the Wooting ADHE or don't really care about modding their keyboard that much. Maybe the tape mod or force break mod is all you want to do. But yeah, it is just a really solid package overall. I just really hope they would allow you to choose your keycaps for each colorway since i did not like those pink ones at all but that is all for this one uh, thanks for watching and goodbye